going on YouTube? Tone M here. Going to do a video on my Phoenix Arms 22 long rifle pocket pistol here. Um, it is a great pistol. I have tons of fun uh, firing it. It is my uh, nightstand pistol, actually. It used to be my carry pistol for a while. Then I moved up to a uh, 380 and, uh, of course, a 9mm. But, um, yeah, this was one of the uh, second to first pistols I bought, or I bought back when I was getting into the whole uh, gun scene and everything. And um, I've never had a problem with this pistol whatsoever. I've uh, never had failures to feed, I've never had failures to eject, it didn't matter what type of ammo I fired through it, um, it's rated for standard velocity, um, but I've fired high velocity through it, um, subsonic and sonic, uh, and, and it, it, it's it's cycled like a champ. I have over probably four thousand rounds through this. Um, I have had no issues with no cracking, no barrel bulging, no uh, frame loosening, no uh, parts falling, breaking, um, wearing out. I haven't had any issues. Accurate as hell. Um, it comes with two types of barrels. Uh, the standard three inch which it comes with uh, as a basic model and then it has a five inch uh, barrel that you can buy separate or you can buy the kit which comes again with the three inch barrel including the 5 inch barrel along with the lock box and um, cleaning assemblies and whatnot. Um, it's obviously more expensive than this model which I got the basic model this one right here um, they don't charge you a difference between the colors uh, there's black which is the one I purchased there's black and silver um, that's about it actually thinking about it it's just those two colors they don't charge a difference some uh, gun companies you know if it's a different color or whatever they'll a couple dollars more or whatever whatnot Phoenix Arms doesn't do that and the price has since I bought this stayed the same um, I bought this about three years ago um, and it's it's stayed it stayed the same. I purchased it for 130, shipping and handling 135, well, tax and all about 137. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you can go on grabagun.com right now, and it's still going for 130 or maybe even 125. Um, again, it doesn't matter if it's the silver, uh, black, or all black. They the same price. Um, with that said, uh, these come in two different calibers. I purchased the 22 long rifle. It also comes in a 25 caliber. Both are the same exact price also. Um, so that was one cool thing that Phoenix Arms did that I personally respect and I think is awesome. Um, you can buy the 22 long rifle or the 25 caliber and they're the exact same price. Uh, shop around, you can probably find it maybe a little cheaper, uh, but you shouldn't find it any more expensive than about 130. Um, if you are finding it for more than 130, go to grabagun.com. With that said, let's go ahead and take her apart. Alright, so I'll put that camera down here for a second and uh, basically what you want to do is you 
check to see if there's any rounds in it. Obviously, it's empty. I don't do any of my videos with uh, anything loaded. Uh, one, for safety, obviously, and two, um, it's just stupid. So don't ever do that. Always check your weapons before you do anything, uh, especially around anybody. All right. Now, to take this apart, what you're going to do is you're going to keep the slide back just like this. However, don't hit the safety. Now, the, uh, the safety acts as a slide lock. Um, right now, uh, the slide is going to keep going back and forth and, and lock forward because I don't have it engaged, the, the safety that is. Uh, the reason that is, is because all Phoenix Arms come with a magazine, um, a magazine safety. And basically what that means is that if the magazine is out of this pistol, the gun will not fire. The gun will lock up, basically. Right now there's no magazine in, so you can pull the slide back and forth, no problem. However, once you... Uh, flip that ma uh, safety up and lock the slide back you cannot get that you can't get that back out until so you you put a magazine in now um, that's okay that's not a problem uh, if you're really uh, confident and uh, careful then you can do what I'm about to do and basically take a magazine um, I did not take my rounds out so it is fully loaded magazine and um, what I'm doing is I'm only going to install the magazine halfway into the bottom of the pistol and the only reason that is is about center of the pistol grip inside there's a a little lever that once the magazine is installed depresses and it lets the pistol know that it's okay to release that safety okay I'm not gonna push the magazine all the way in like I'm trying to uh, cycle around in okay so be very careful of that um, so again, um, my honest, honest uh, opinion would be to take all the rounds out and use an empty magazine. Um, for all intents of safety purposes, that's what you should do. But anyway, I'm not putting it all the way in. Okay, I'm not putting it all the way in. I'm putting it about, if you could see it, x-rayed or anything you'd see it's about right here the top of that magazine and basically what that's going to do is it's going to let me take that see now just for safety purposes like I said if you're not comfortable you can hold it with your thumb the slide you can pull your magazine out and uh, there you go you should have no trouble now, with that said, uh, with that safety lock or whatever, um, that magazine lock, that uh, that magazine that I just stuffed aside there is going to come into use again later for the uh, reinstalling or reassembly of this, okay? Um, Alright, so once that's already been done, the slide's been disengaged so that way you can uh, freely move it don't engage the safety or it'll lock up again you'll have to do the whole thing with the magazine with your two fingers from your whatever hand you are left or right put the slide back hold it with your thumb whatever hand that you're holding the pistol with you'll see a little tab here okay it sticks out on either side that is what's holding the slide together with that said you're gonna take two fingers and you're gonna pull it out you're gonna pull it 
towards you. You'll hear it click. And basically what that does is it disengages the the bar that's holding the barrel. Now the barrel is sitting when I take it apart you'll see exactly what I mean. I accidentally engaged the safety. There we go. Alright. Let the slide go forward slightly. You'll see a spring pop. That's okay. That's coming apart like it's supposed to. And the barrel should come right out. And there's your recoil spring. And that'll come also right out. Your slide will come out. And that piece that takes it all apart comes out. This is the tab that I was telling you that you have to pull. The spring sits there like that, right on this piece right here, this little uh, lead nipple. And um, when you pull it, I gotta get this one. okay, I guess my uh, wife and my daughter just came home. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So anyhow, um, the spring, your recoil spring. Hi, honey. The recoil spring here holds it together, and that's what that tension when you pull on this tab is. So anyhow, when it's locked and everything's set together, the barrel, as you can see, comes out. See that groove there? That groove right there? There's a bar sit inside the frame there. Let's see how, no, how well you're going to see it or not. But um, that's where the barrel locks into. This is a blowback pistol. This is the design um, that the barrel does not move. It's not recoil operated. It, uh, the barrel never moves the whole time the gun is firing. Uh, most blowback pistol designs, the pistol is literally fastened in such a way to the frame that it actually does not come off. Not without some uh, monkeying around, taking some taking some uh, pin uh, punchers and knocking some pins out and everything like that. Um, with the Phoenix arm, the barrel does come out. The reason is, is because as I stated before, uh, you can switch the barrels out from the standard 3 inch to the uh, extended 5 inch barrel. Alright, once you've taken it apart, you'll see all your uh, pieces there. Ah, okay. I did a video before this one on a Sky CPX2 9mm model. And uh, one of my comments in the video was that the blowback design pistols uh, usually you're able to um, get the firing pin and spring out uh, they're not encased um, apparently not every blowback pistol is like that as you can see here uh, the firing pin and firing pin spring are indeed encased in the slide itself so you can't actually get to it um, not without some really good fiddling and some small looks like hexagon screwdrivers but um, so yeah so for those who watched the CPX uh, sky video there's our there's our answer um, in this video so uh, the 22 is uh, indeed encased so um, all right put all pieces in an area where you can easily get to them and what I do is I like to take my Remington oil here give the slide a good squirt down he's been sitting a while I spray the spring down I spray that little tab down and I spray the barrel down. Now, 
I'll let those sit and I'll take the frame and I will go ahead and just give it a good once over with the spray get all the little parts little attaching areas where the uh, frame attaches to where the uh, or I'm sorry where the slide attaches to and where the barrel locks into and then I'll go down to the hammer and uh, for those who've never had a Phoenix arm, they are uh, single action, um, hammer, strike. Uh, they're very, very fun. Um, it does have a, uh, a hammer safety as well, or a decocker, if you will. Uh, basically, um, you can carry it with a round in, uh, with a round chamber ready to fire and uh, if you for whatever reason forget and pull the trigger uh, you know that your safety's not on or whatever if you have that safety on you can pull the trigger all day long it won't fire it will not let the hammer hit the striker so that's another cool thing um, these are made in, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, I should say, in California, and California has some really, really strict, um, really strict gun safety rules and laws over there, regulations and everything. Sprayed everything. I took my utility rag here and wiped out all the excess. I gave the slide a good once over with the rag. And uh, don't worry about getting in the nooks and crannies and everything because, you know, depending on the size of your finger, you're not going to get it. Uh, I wiped the barrel down on the outside, and I wiped the spring down, and I wiped the uh, slide lock down, or slide, uh, the, the tab that you use to take the gun apart, um, whatever you want to call it. I also went ahead and wiped down the frame itself. Uh, one thing while I'm on that subject with the slide or with the frame here, as you can see, the hammer is back. So therefore, in the process of taking the slide and barrel off, the pistol was uh, put in the firing mode or or cycled or whatnot. Um, what that means, and that pretty much happens with most every uh, semiotic slide operated pistol when you're trying to take them apart somehow or another you always end up um, racking it and putting it into the ready mode um, what uh, when that happens you want to be very mindful of the trigger while you're handling the, the frame and cleaning it and everything because you don't ever want to press the trigger the reason I say that is if you press the trigger the slide isn't on there to hold these uh, small parts here. You'll see this L-shaped or, depending how you're looking at it, seven-shaped little bar there. That uh, that lets the slide, or this works with the slide. Basically, when the slide goes back, this gets snagged inside the slide and puts the, the gun into ready mode and right now it's poking up and that means it's ready you pull the trigger and this will snap forward and uh, which is to release the uh, firing pin and everything and let the fire let the weapon fire now the reason I'm saying not to pull the trigger if anyone's ever done it you'll know what I'm talking about for those who haven't done it I'm gonna save you a lot of grief if you were to pull this trigger and basically this goes to any semi-automatic if you take it apart um, if you pull the trigger nothing is covering or holding these parts in so literally all the pressure that it's holding right now the, between the springs and everything holding the the hammer back holding the trigger and ready um, will be dispersed will let go well what that means is those parts inside will literally just explode out of the uh, out of the frame 
um, not explode as in boom, bang, and, and, and you're dead. Just literally, they will shoot right out of the pistol, and there will be little pieces, about three to be exact, um, that'll, that'll just go everywhere. Then you have to find them and painstakingly put them back together and everything. So just saving you the grief and the headache don't pull the trigger ever when the frame is open like that because it will uh... you will lose parts that way i've done it when i first messed with the pistols uh, when i first started messing with pistols a long time ago and man i wish i knew what i told you guys now when that happened or before that happened because that like i said would have saved a lot of grief alright so that said take your cleaning stick, your barrel stick, bore stick, whatever you want to call it. Find your 22 caliber wire brush and you want to take the barrel and just ease it in there. Give it a little twist every now and then as you're pushing down and just you know proceed all the way through now you can bring it back through or you can just let the stick go all the way down I try to just kinda work it back and forth um, just gets a good cleaning that way you can do it that way also um, it's one of the best or this one of the neat things about having a barrel detached is way you can hold it freely and mess with it however way you want so basically what you're doing with the wire brush is uh, scratching the uh, inside of the barrel getting all the residue that the uh, bore oil spray loosened up or soaked up into and that's all the gunpowder that didn't burn up um, all the residuals from uh, you know some of the the shell or the, the bullet um, scraping and all that just all the the gunk that that happens you know um, just getting it out and uh, gets it it breaks it up loosens it up knocks it out you can blow it but um, after you've done all that take your cotton swab and repeat the process but with the cotton swab and just work it back and forth. As you can see, when I first put it, uh, put the cotton swab into the camera, it was very white, um, brand new. Actually, I haven't even used that that uh, this one before until now. Uh, but basically, give it a good once over a couple times, <laughs> blow it out, and you'll see all that stuff that you just scrubbed out with the uh, wire brush. There you go. What didn't blow out or knock out with the scrubber, uh, you just got out with the swab. All right, yuck, right? Let's throw that aside there. And what you should get, I don't know how well you'll see it, but you should get a nice, clean barrel. Let's see if you can see that. But there you go. She's nice and clean and ready. Once that's done. Um, that's pretty much it. There you go. I mean, that's taking it apart, giving it a good clean down. You've already sprayed down through there. Um, if you want to, if you can get your finger into it or not, um, take the rag you were using and you can use one of the sticks and just kind of stuff it into the magazine weld here like that. Not like you're going crazy or anything but let's work it through just a bit and um, you can you can push it all the way through if you want or you can just kinda do that just kinda finick the the stick around a little bit wiggle it around and um, the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm getting the oil that ran down when I sprayed in there other than that the gun is pretty much finished um, now you can definitely uh, take the gun apart way further than this, um, and I'm talking you can take it out or take it down 
you can take it apart down to literally you know the trigger and everything taking the grips off getting up into um, all of that inner workings and everything and really give it a detailed cleaning if you want um, I don't feel the need for it or see the need for it I haven't dropped it in mud or anything so I'm not I'm not going to do that. Now, if I were to drop it or um, it got wet or it started corroding for whatever reason, then I would definitely, you know, definitely do that. Um, but I'm not going to. I just do the bare basic necessities. All right. Now, to reassemble it, uh, you want to go ahead and just pretty much do everything reverse of what you did in the beginning. Um, you want to put your slide tab back in, put the spring back on the nipple. Um, now this can be a bit of a pain when you go to put the slide back on because the spring, because it doesn't have a bar inside it or it's not over the barrel like in some uh, blowback design pistols, um, tends to kind of pinch up kind of arc um, that's not a big deal just got to be careful with it take the barrel you want to keep it above the slide set it up on the slide like that and um, try to do this sideways so you guys can still see there are I should probably point that out before I do that two little protruding areas on the frame here like uh, wings or uh, I just draw, lost my spring there. Right there. I'll see if you can see it or not, but right there. That's where your frame and the slide lock together. There's little notches on the slide right there and there. So that's basically where you're trying to get the slide to that point where the um, where the slide will stay on the frame. All right. In the same time you're doing that, you're also trying not to bend the spring and trying to put the barrel in the spot where it goes too. Actually, um, to make it the easiest, you don't have to put the barrel on just yet, and uh, I'll tell you why. So, just for all intensive uh, purposes and to make it easier for everyone watching that hasn't messed with this kind of pistol before yet. Um, Take your slide, put it right where the notches are, but don't don't put it in all the way. Take the spring and push it in a bit. Let the slide kind of cover it. Like I said, it can be a little bit of a pain. You want to set it just like that. Now, for, I'll take it apart and show you again. Keep the spring. You got to watch out for this part here too because it'll snag. Um, try and do it sideways. All right. You want to take the spring here, stick it up into the slide tip. I can't do it upside down, guys. If I could, I would. Just kind of press the spring inward like you're giving it pressure with the slide and then you want to set the slide down alright now the slide is on but it's not locked to the frame yet everything's in place like it's supposed to be the springs where it needs to be you want to pull it back now if you want to if you feel like the spring is going to shoot up um, keep your finger there that's the best way to do it it keeps it from bending it keeps it from uh, slipping and, lo and literally launching out of the frame. I've had that happen. And you want to slowly press it backwards, keeping your finger over the spring, uh, keeping it from tweaking or bending or pinching. Like right now, I just went ahead and adjusted it a little bit, and I'm putting it backwards, keeping the pressure on the slide, and keeping the spring straight. And there you go. And as you're doing that, you're slowly working the slide back, past those little notches right now the slide will not come off of the frame because it's gone past that those grooves 
So once you've done that, you want to go ahead and slide the slide all the way back, hold it with the said thumb, or with the thumb, and uh, you'll see that your spring is fully depressed. And you need that for two reasons. One, it holds the spring in place. That way you're not losing parts, you're not, nothing shooting out. It's also keeping the slide lock in place also. Um, so there's constant tension, so it's, it's all locked up, it's all ready. The second reason you want to have the spring all the way back like it is and your thumb on the slide is because you need room to get the barrel in. And what you're going to do is you're going to literally stick the barrel back end, this part right here, in like this in an angle and you're going to hook it onto this little bar. I don't know how well you'll see that bar, but there's the two bars there. One of those bars is the, the actual the top bar is the one you're going to lock that groove into. And so you're going to slide it in like so. And once you feel it stop, you're going to push it. You hear a click. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it one more time. And you're going to hear a click. So I'm going to be quiet for now and hear if you hear if you hear that click. All right, the barrel will go forward as such, and you just slide forward, and there you go. Everything is locked in place now. All right, now, what I was saying about the magazine earlier being needed after you've put it together is for the simple reason of once you go to fire it or cycle through to make sure everything is working you don't ever want to dry fire it folks it's a hammer struck weapon you don't want to dry fire it um, you can pull the hammer back hold it with your thumb and uh, uh, ride the ride the hammer all the way down. Don't ever just dry fire it. Um, with what I was saying about the magazine being needed for later purposes for reassembly is once everything's said and done you're going to want to open her back up, lock the slide just like this uh, with the uh, safety and the reason for that is you want to oil her that way she's ready for later use and whatnot. Now, what I do is I just take a little bit of the lubricant and I dab it right by the barrel, not in the barrel, but right on the side of it where the slide and the frame rub together. And um, I do a couple, uh, like one or two dabs there and I'll do a little bit right here on the slot on the barrel itself like a dab like that let it run back and forth and the same on the other side just a little dab and then just let it go back and forth the reason I do that is because one it keeps it from corroding you know all that um, it also uh, as you can see the bare metal showing uh, it's metal rubbing on metal so it just keeps it nice and greased and everything um, also I'll take a little bit of that oil and I'll dab it to the trigger itself one good dab and I'll let it sink in like that and you can do it on both sides if you want um, I just do a little, little drop, just let it go down. I do a little oil in here because that is your round ejector. I just drop it right on the thing there. And once that's done, you can't, you can't slide it. You can't let the, you can't release the slide. So that's where the magazine comes in handy. Um, at the end once it's all been put together again I only put it halfway enough to release the safety lock take the magazine back out 
make sure there's no round that got stuck in it. And then I just pull the slide back and forth a little bit, a couple times, to make sure the oil that we put on has rubbed its way all the way through. My last and final step is I take some of that oil with the hammer open and I drop a couple drops right in that open area and what that's going to do is it's going to let it go into the hammer itself and then you just add a little when it's closed and basically you don't have to cock it all the way I just oh if it can't be helped it can't be helped but I just kind of work it back and forth like that making sure it gets in there I only do it a couple times and there you go that's it just let it sit for a little bit let it, everything go through and then you just take your handy dandy utility rag and give her a once over um, you can dry the excess lubricant off if you want or you can just leave a little bit on there um, on the metal areas uh, not soaking or dripping obviously but like a little dampness like if you have a little shine that you see um, you know there's nothing wrong with doing that um, if you have a hoster definitely keep your pistols and hosters or lock boxes stuff like that um, if you don't have it and it's just sitting um, uncovered more or less and you don't want it to get dusty uh, you can stuff them in an old sock wrap them in an old rag shower or uh, towel shirt stuff like that um, and it just helps maintain the appearance of it and everything keeps it from getting dusty and everything like that and there you go guys the disassembly cleaning and reassembly of the Phoenix Arms 22 long rifle pistol hope you guys enjoyed I hope it was informative entertaining uh, if you laughed you cried all that good stuff, leave them in the comments. If there's anything that you saw that I did that made you cringe, leave that in the comments. I'm always willing to uh, learn from my mistakes. So, uh, have at it, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, subscribe, share with friends. And hopefully I can come out with some more videos soon. As soon as I can get out to the range. Alright, that's Tone M. And I am out, guys. Bye.